Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure for us to be here this afternoon um, to tell you all about uh, not only age-friendly, but uh, indeed about uh, Saskatchewan Seniors Mechanism. So uh, just a word about the Saskatchewan Seniors Mechanism, or SSM as we commonly refer to it, uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, we are an umbrella organization that brings together uh, 16 other seniors organizations, uh, representing about 100,000 seniors throughout the province. And we do this in order to bring a better quality of life for older adults. Now, there are a number of ways in which we do this as well. Um, we do uh, it through uh, research and action on issues that uh, affect seniors. Uh, we act as a unifying voice in advocating for seniors. As I said, we speak for about 100,000 of them. Uh, we give direction and support to our member organizations. And uh, we create awareness and coordinate, and coordinate the resources and services for seniors. And as well, we partner with uh, our member organizations and others. We recently signed a partnership agreement with SUMA, and uh, we were indeed delighted to do, do that. So today is an opportunity for us to showcase what Age Friendly is all about. So uh, you. while you're scanning all our member organizations, uh, and the support groups. We have a little skit for you and we'll just take a minute to get ourselves together for the skit. We need to get to the poster. I got to get going on this. Just because I'm a realtor, the mayor wants me to recruit for Cat River. So I'm supposed to meet a couple that phoned about Cat River, and I'm hoping I can really describe our great little town because we sure do need some more people to come to Cat River. And we are kind of inclusive. Notice we even let dogs come to Cat River. So I hope, oh, I bet that's them right there. Hi. Hi, I'm Robert. Hi, You're Robert. Linda. I'm Linda. And I'm Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. Oh, it's really good to see you. I'm sure you'll find out wonderful things about Cat River. So tell us something about Cat River, Linda. What's so extra special about the town? And uh, what's the best thing about Cat River? What are some of the things to do here? What are some of your advantages? Advantages. Hmm. Best thing about Cat River. Hmm. Hmm. I know. The best thing about Cat River is that we are warm and welcoming. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, yeah. yeah we really are very welcoming. We love it that you're thinking of coming to Cat River. Anything else? Um, well, other people are warm and welcoming too. And it's a great place to be. Okay. Well, our, uh, my mother is live, going to be living with us, and she has some mobility problems and is in a wheelchair. So what do you have that kind of accommodates that? Or Well, um, she's, she's pretty well in the wheelchair, right? Pretty well, yeah. Yeah, well, right, tell right. Tell me about it. <laughs> OK. Well, um, if she wants to get out to community activities, do you think that would be so? Yeah, I would think so. She's fairly sociable. She likes to get together with people. And, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Well, I do know that the seniors play cribbage on Wednesdays. Okay. Yeah, so she could get to that. It's uh, downtown in the, in the seniors' center. Okay. So do you have anything around transportation to maybe help her get there if we weren't around? You know, a van, ah. a, a bus, or do you have a volunteer driver program? Ah, ah, transportation, transportation. Hmm. Oh, I know. Joe has a van. Joe has a van. He hauls different things in the van, but he has some seats in the van. But because he's got the back two seats out, I'm sure he could transport your mom. That doesn't sound all that safe, though. Oh, oh no, it's, it's really quite good. Um, well, 
I'm not quite sure. She, she, she probably wants to just be in her wheelchair, right? Yeah. yeah. So if Joel got Chuck to come with him to drive, they sometimes do this, they could just open up the big back doors and they could just lift mum in the wheelchair up into that back space, close the doors, and she's right in that place, snug as a bug in a rug. It'll You're be going just back and forth, won't you? Oh no, no, no! Because the seats are there. will be only a few inches. It'll be kind of fun. <laughs> hmm. Safe. Hmm. Well, <laughs> something to think about. <laughs> um. Oh yeah. And when they get downtown, that's the best part. Once they lift her out downtown, and she wants to get to the senior center, the sidewalks on our main intersection, which is the one with the traffic light have those sidewalk cutouts in them. So she could just swish off to the senior center. Yeah. Mm. So, um, but you have more than your mom. How many are in your family? Oh, we have a great family. We have a large family. We have seven sons and four daughters, you know. Seven sons and four Indeed, daughters. Indeed, yes. And we're pretty proud of them. They're pretty good kids, too. Wow, and the mom, too, and yeah, the two of yeah, you? Yeah. They're going to need a big house. <laughs> we are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. yeah, so if you've got seven sons, uh, what kinds of activities do they like? Do they like sports? Oh, yes. Uh, a couple of our boys are really good hockey players. They can handle that puck very, very skillfully. But... Our daughter, one of our daughters, she's probably the best of all of them. Do you have a girls hockey team? Oh, well, Cat River's really known for its hockey teams, but actually they're gender equal. So the girls get to play with the boys. Oh, okay. Yeah, so she's good, she'll be all right. She'll be all right. They'll, they'll be really happy to have some more players. That'll be good. And not to mention, if there's some more people, maybe those dressing rooms at the rink could use some fixing up. And right now, if there's a girl that plays with the boys' team, she dresses in the girls' bathroom. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it works out. It works out. So yeah. what about finding out about activities or clubs or different things for us or, or you know, and the kids too, I guess? How do you find oh. out about those? Oh, well, well, well. Oh, the best place, the best thing, the way we find out about it in Cat River, you go to the post office between 10 and 11 on weekdays, and everybody goes to the post office in the morning, and that's where you're going to meet people. It's like a hangout, is it? Well, it's just that everybody has to get their mail, mm. and then the coffee shop's just down the street, so you start at the post office, oh, and you can talk with people, and uh, you'll find out about things. Okay. There's even the odd poster sometimes put up in the, in the post office. Oh, okay. So yeah. a lot of word of mouth and yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, do you have, like, a town website or anything that you put things on, or...? Uh, well, we've talked about developing a website. You don't know anything about, I haven't known anything about developing websites, Well, do you? a little bit, yeah. Oh, you would be good. <laughs> well, uh, we've talked about the website and we talked about the paper, but the publisher of the paper is pretty sure that the paper's for describing what has happened, not what's going to happen. So, really, the post office is the best communication place. Okay. And word of mouth. Well, yeah. Yeah, well, that's who really knows stuff. <laughs> yeah, so, but you can see there's, there's all kinds of places and all those warm, welcome people at the post office will be glad to see you. So, I'm wondering, uh, what do you think? Are you thinking about maybe coming to Cat River? Well, uh, I suppose we could give it a try. Uh, we'll have oh, to yeah. see, but uh, yeah, yeah. it sounds like maybe it'll be oh, all I, right. I can think of a house. Well, I don't want us to get too hasty now. You know we were going to look at Dog City, too. Oh, yeah. And... Uh, uh, check it out before we made a decision so mm -hmm. so we'll 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 get back to you or mm -hmm. well i think before you go to the dogs that you take a good look but i'm sure we'll see you again in cat river okay
So age-friendly helps you look at your community the way others might see it. So what do you want to portray for your community? What do you want people to know about it? Um, and think about uh, what things are beneficial for your community. Um, so we're going to look at age-friendly in the next few minutes. And just to start out, uh, age-friendly started out with the World Health Organization in 2006. And uh, it brought together uh, cities and uh, people that were interested in the aging process, uh, in supporting healthy aging. And it is, so it's a global movement, it's just not uh, uh, something here in Canada. In 2007 is when it started in Canada, and uh, they developed uh, a guideline, the, the governments uh, around rural and remote communities that were 5,000 people or less. And uh, that guideline is uh, actually on the uh, Health Canada website, I believe, or the, you know, the government website. And also Public Health Agency of Canada leads the, uh, the age-friendly initiative across our country. So the Saskatchewan Seniors Mechanism is uh, bringing this to the forefront because of our provincial nature and uh, uh, seniors is, uh, is our focus. And we are very pleased that SUMA has, has signed on with us and is partnering with us on this initiative. It will be very, very helpful to us. So age-friendly Saskatchewan, uh, we got together with all of these groups in um, bringing it forth to show what um, you know we're doing in Saskatchewan and, and going towards the government and saying uh, we're all working on this together and uh, we want to uh, keep it going and keep it uh, bringing our communities to the age-friendly level. And so Rosemary, one of the key uh, helps for us and we've been talking with the ministry where a senior is involved, the Ministry of Health. We've talked to Minister Duncan and people from these organizations are also talking about this because one of the key things that might help us, we know would help us, is if the Saskatchewan government would uh, also uh, work towards an accreditation uh, recognition for uh, any villages, towns, cities that uh, took on becoming age-friendly and achieved age-friendly status, which could be useful in advertising and useful in so many ways. So that's one of the things that we're, we're working on, and that's one of the things where SUMA uh, is very helpful with us too. So think about that recognition. Okay. So our purpose is to create inclusive communities. So we want to introduce this age-friendly initiative to everyone and we're looking to provide information, resources and support for communities. Uh, we're looking to put a uh, resource book together, a toolkit so to speak, on, on how to go about it. So it's a, it'll be a guideline for communities and uh, there'll be, you know, different areas within there um, about age-friendly communities, uh, specifically around uh, um, dementia, Alzheimer's, that kind of stuff. Uh, we also want to, we plan on working with First Nation and Métis communities, so we're hoping to have a section on that. So uh, that type of stuff. Uh, and inspire and guide communities in becoming age-friendly. So one of the first uh, projects was the Regina Beach Buena Vista. And two communities side by side, but very different. They are divided by uh, a street between those two communities. Uh, Buena Vista has no street lights. They have no paved streets, but that's the way they want it. They want that kind of country feel. Uh, if people are out walking, normally I guess people, they have the uh, the lights on the outside of the garages, you know, the motion lights or whatever so that people can see, or I guess you take a flashlight when you're walking. But that's the way they want it. They want it quiet. 
They don't want, you know, people racing around their streets or whatever. Uh, Regina Beach has the, the paved streets, uh, the street lights, and most of the business is all on Regina Beach. So th that's uh, two communities, side by side, but yet very different. And so that's why you can't put one template to each community, because every community is unique in, in what they want and what their needs are. So they developed, uh, they developed a committee and uh, uh, did a survey, and they got their surveys back, and then based on those surveys, they uh, pinpointed some things that needed to be working, working on, and that's what they are doing right now. And Regina Beach is quite age-friendly, especially when it comes to facilities and that. There's the, their primary health care site, which is wheelchair accessible, and if you go to Regina Beach, most of their facilities are. They have made them that either they're at that ground level or uh, uh, wheelchair accessible. And also one of their uh, businesses this year won an award from Saskatchewan Seniors Mechanism for being uh, a senior friendly business going over and above, uh, you know, regular things to, to help out the seniors. The Lifelong Learning Center in Regina, um, another kind of a piece of the puzzle they're looking at it from the education side of it. So they are partnering with schools in doing some mentorship stuff. Uh, so getting that interaction between, you know, the older adults and the younger adults. And uh, so it seems to be working well. And they're, they encourage lifelong learning. They hold a number of classes there for older adults. And so that is what they're doing around Age Friendly. Saskatoon Council on Aging uh, for the city of Saskatoon had three phases to theirs. It's a big city, so their phase one was scan and research. Phase two was analyze and plan. Um, out of the first phase came the uh, findings. On the left there, the booklet, and then out of the phase two came the recommendations. And so those are both on their website, on the Saskatoon. Saskatoon Council on Aging website if you want to look it up. And their phase three is the action, monitor, and evaluate. So what they're going to start doing now after uh, the recommendations were made, how they're going to implement and that, and uh, started last year and will continue on. So regional gatherings. Uh, we've held regional gather gatherings on Age Friendly. Um, in 2014, we were in Humboldt. Yorkton and Moose Jaw. Um, Humboldt is uh, getting their committee together. They are very gung-ho on, on uh, age-friendly and they've done a lot of stuff already around it. Um, and they looked at it in a little different way than some, uh, some of the places where they, um, it was around the culture of their town. So they divided it up into like values and direct, directory, directions, how they, what, where they wanted to go. So in their way of planning it, they did active, welcoming, prosperous, creative, green, you know, the green spaces, connected, and sustainable. So there's many different ways of looking at age friendly and, and how you want to establish it in your town. Uh, Yorkton, uh, we've been out there twice and they now have a, the second time they established their committee and they are now in the process of um, putting together a resolution for their uh, local uh, city council to accept age friendly uh, as part of their uh, part of what they want to do in their in their city and to, and to make it more age friendly. And Moose Jaw, we just had the workshop there in December and so they're just uh, very starting out with that. 2015, uh, Pontex and Weyburn are coming up in February. So <coughs> Pontex is Monday, February 23rd. So if anybody lives in that area, um, you're welcome to come. You just have to phone us and register. And Weyburn is two days later on the Wednesday, the 25th. And uh, we will be doing workshops around age friendly and you'll, we'll get into more of how you go about becoming age friendly and the steps uh, and the different things. It's uh, more in depth. We can't go into that here today. Um, 
and there will be other communities around the province too that we will be uh, attending throughout 2015. And whoever wants, you know, phones us up and wants one, well, we're, that's what we plan on doing. So we are pleased to be able to work with the Fédération des Anis Francescois, I hope I said that right, uh, to include the Francophone communities. And we also want to work towards involvement of the First Nation and Métis communities. So what is age-friendly? So I'm going to ask you that. Hope there's some brave souls out there. <laughs> so what would age-friendly mean to you? When somebody says that to you, what does that bring to mind? Inclusive, all ages. Right? Any? Respect. Respect, yeah. What Accessibility. about? Accessibility, absolutely. Yeah. And what about our little skit here? Welcoming. So all those things are part of what is age friendly, and there's and there's many more. Um, age friendly is about uh, you know your policies, your services, uh, your um, settings, your structures, so they support active aging throughout the lifespan. And it's about encouraging the, um, all your citizens to become engaged and involved in the decision-making processes that affect your life. So with that, it's why become age-friendly. So if you get your community engaged, you get your people involved, they're, they're in the in the decision-making process. I mean, when you're in your, your towns and stuff and you're planning anyway, it's like, put the age-friendly lens around it. Think about what will make it a better community for everybody. So if you get them involved and engaged, you become a healthier community, you become a safer community. You reduce isolation and abuse. Um, it becomes more vibrant, stronger, because you're connected. And uh, it's also greater opportunity for businesses. If you have a good experience when you go into a business, you're going to come back. And you're going to tell those people. You know, you're going to tell others about coming, you know, that that was a great place to go in or whatever. Um, and you know, it can be vice versa too, if you don't have a great experience. So, um, so it's, it's setting up your community so that people can age actively healthier, again, through their whole life. So in Canada, these are uh, communities in Canada that are working on age-friendly or have become age-friendly recognized. So, like Manitoba has 100 communities involved. Uh, Alberta, just in the past two years, uh, 2013, Strathcona County uh, was one of those. And uh, the city of Edmonton became age-friendly recognized last year. And um, the Strathcona County one, like again, go on the internet and look up some of these places and it's very interesting to see some of the stuff they're doing. Um, the county provides for uh, the needs of a municipality that includes a large urban center and a significant rural territory and population. So uh, it took in quite a, a broad area and, and two different uh, sides of the spectrum. Um, and so in Saskatchewan, we're behind the eight ball. <laughs> but like I say, we do have Regina Beach, Buena Vista working on. We do have uh, Humboldt and uh, Yorkton working on, so uh, there is some, some stuff going on already. Okay, so age-friendly is about community. So if you look at the word community, it's coming together in unity. So we need to all work together, as we know, in small towns and villages, you really need to work together instead of against each other or separate from each other. Um, you can get better ideas 
going around. Uh, and of course, people are the heart and soul of communities. And everyone has important, valuable contributions to make so that it's a better place to live, work, and raise families and grow old in our communities. That's what we want, to keep people in our, people want to stay in their communities. So let's learn about what we can do about that. So now we have the Manitoba video, and uh, it's a very inspiring in video as far as I'm concerned. It's what they have done um, in different communities across Manitoba. Uh, so I'll just let you uh, listen to that. So just hang tough with me here. No, now it doesn't want to go. There we go. Uh, that's not it. <laughs> okay, where did it go to? <laughs> Well, that's where I went to last time, and it didn't come up this time. Okay. Sorry, little technical. Well, I went in. Well, I went into that arrow, but maybe I. The inner workings of convention, everyone. <laughs> I don't know where they stored that video for you. Because that's where it was before yeah, the last I know, time. Yeah, I know, but it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'll see if we can get it back on camera. Okay. Okay, well, but we guarantee you that when this video appears out of the cloud, <laughs> you're going to love it. So what it is, is in Manitoba, Manitoba does have a, a system by which communities can go through a process and achieve milestones and become accredited as age friendly. So it's kind of an incentive. So the communities that you see in the video, well, have been going through that kind of a process. And uh, some of the projects that they've done are really doable without a lot of money being spent, which is something we have to know in our communities. In some cases, it means planning and spending the money really wisely. I think what it's fair to say that what has uh, moved Manitoba forward and what we're trying to achieve is that they have their provincial governor, the government behind them. In most instances where there's an age-friendly community that's been designated, they have either their state or their uh, local government or uh, their provincial government uh, uh, backing them up. And this is something that we've tried to uh, uh, convince our provincial government to get behind. Uh, we've met with uh, Minister Duncan, for example, and uh, uh, now we have on board uh, the SUMA people, and we hope that uh, we'll be able to convince them to be supportive, because that seems to be what uh, helps a uh, uh, province, a uh, state, to really get on board uh, with uh, age friendly.
Oh, I probably had one that I could have used in my pocket. All across Manitoba, more and more communities are recognizing the importance of becoming age-friendly. The Manitoba government invites communities to join the Age-Friendly Manitoba Initiative and discover how doing so can be the catalyst... Oops. Sorry. <laughs> Something happened there. Uh, here we go. Try this again. All across Manitoba, more and more communities are recognizing the importance of becoming age-friendly. The Manitoba government invites communities to join the Age-Friendly Manitoba Initiative and discover how doing so can be the catalyst to remarkable changes. To Gladstone, age-friendly has become um, our new way of life. Uh, we were, like many other small communities in the rural Manitoba, we were seeing a, a dramatic decline in population and a dramatic decline in businesses in our community. After attending the Age Friendly Workshop in 2008, uh, it gave us a vision of where we needed to take our community for continued growth or uh, to revitalize our community. And uh, we have not looked back since that date. As a community, to be age friendly is to be socially inclusive and physically accessible to people of all ages and all abilities. Age-friendly is all about respect. Um, that's a very important thing. Age-friendly communities foster respect for the diversity and the varying abilities of older Manitobans and for their continued contributions to the economic and social viability of the communities in which they live. That includes creating opportunities that encourage seniors to continue to enjoy the great outdoors and the natural beauty Manitoba has to offer. I just recently retired and so I've uh, found myself very much enjoying the opportunity to walk along the river more often than I ever have before. It's absolutely beautiful and is certainly adding to my quality of life. Age Friendly is about an environment that enables people of all ages, but particularly older people, to live the life that they choose. So in some ways, it helps communities come alive. The Gladstone Wellness Trail was built with the help of the Age Friendly Initiative. It's quickly become a focal point in this small rural Manitoba community. When it was complete, it wasn't seniors just walking down there, it was all ages. Students, children, grandchildren, grandparents, walking, using the exercise stations. This is win. not a competition. <laughs> we count. One, one two, two, Well, three. you feel better for one thing, you know. I've always been outside for a lot, and it's, uh, it's, it's very nice to be able to come out here. Almost half of Manitoba's current communities are now recognized as age-friendly. For this Pinawa jazz band, that means musicians of all ages are welcome. I find the young people are, are really wonderful in this town. I would not hate to be left in a community where it was just us old folks. I definitely enjoy playing with the senior members because it's cool to have like many people in the community get together and play because otherwise you might not get to see them so it definitely gives us a chance to come closer together and meet one another. Do you got all your family on Facebook? Yes. Yes, that's nice. In Gladstone, the younger generation was quick to recognize the benefits of getting to know those that came before them. I think age friendly is uh, a good attitude and atmosphere in the community where all generations can get along well and interact with each other. I was kind of surprised that I had fun. We played shuffleboard, which they were really good at, and I was kind of pretty bad, so they showed me up on that quite well. But yeah, they had a lot to say, and I had a good time. The Age Friendly Initiative focuses on practical issues like transportation, infrastructure, housing, and health. 
and Age Friendly also provides a blueprint for communities and local businesses to work together to reach those goals. So you have to engage the larger community, someone from the school, someone from the community center, someone from any kind of housing organization that you have, uh, any seniors organizations, because uh, a committee of age friendly can't do all the work themselves. I knew that we had a big job to do and it wasn't about buildings and it wasn't about sidewalks, it was about how we made our people feel. Many countries around the world are grappling to understand how we can ensure that older people remain connected in their communities and also you know, a part of the economic and social productivity. There is remarkable similarity among communities within Canada and around the world. Manitoba has taken a leadership position in so many aspects of the creation of Age Friendly but also the sustainability of Age Friendly. Uh, I certainly would uh, uh, recommend the Age Friendly program to other communities. First of all, you, the brand itself uh, suggests that you're a community that are, are open to making improvements to support people of all ages in your community. The province through the Age Friendly Initiative have been extremely supportive of the projects that we have uh, been doing and that has uh, helped to promote our community and also to continue to improve it. I think the fact that our community knows that we're working towards a goal and it's, it's a journey, um, they're happy and I think that's what other communities need to understand. It's, it's not something that you're just going to do this year or you're going to do it for five years. You're in for the long haul. You're going to do this from here on in. It's making your community better right now and for the, all the tomorrows that are ahead. The Manitoba government's Seniors and Healthy Aging Secretariat assists communities in our province to become age-friendly. You can make a difference by supporting age-friendly Manitoba initiatives in your community. To learn more about making your community more age-friendly, visit our website at agefriendlymanitoba.ca or call the Secretariat at 1-800-665-6565. So there you can see um, the many things that they have done and intergenerationally how they've brought uh, all the ages together and that's what we want to do. This, the focus of age-friendly communities started with seniors but now it is branching out, it's evolving and we want to be inclusive so it's got to be all ages. So um, out of those the World Health Organization, they came out with eight focus areas or domains uh, to go to be guided by, uh, you know, things that affect our life. These are decisions, you know, things that affect our life. So those are the eight domains um, that we deal with when you're uh, working on age friendly. And Right now, as you watch the next slides, we're going to go through each of these areas. And we want you to think about yourselves as recruiters for your community. And, uh, you know, just look at the questions and, and think about them. So we have the outdoor spaces and buildings. How accessible do you find them? And, you know, think about your parks, your sidewalks, your streets, your stores. Transportation, you know, how would you describe the availability of transportation in your community, you know, for people to get around? Uh, think of those who don't drive or have the varying physical abilities. You know, we, we become, when age friendly, we become aware of barriers that other people face. Um, sometimes we don't think about that. Uh, you know, people in a wheelchair or even a mom with a stroller and the kids and trying to get through a door, you know, all these type of things. Wouldn't get too many in that little vehicle. <laughs> it's not like those uh, housing. What kind of housing options exist in your community? And is there a variety of them? You know, do they suit, 
you know, a varying multiple number of needs. Uh, are they affordable? Uh, it would be nice to see some housing developers building communities around age-friendly, you know, um, especially for, you know, some of this, the senior ones that would be one level of housing, you know, and you'd have a store and you'd have the pharmacy in there. You could maybe have a medical clinic in that whole area, you know, recreation, that built environment, you know, and have the transportation there. And then, of course, affordability comes into, which is a <laughs> something to really work on because not everybody can afford, you know, three, four thousand dollars each, uh, you know, a month for some of these places. So, uh, social participation: How easy is it for you to participate in social activities in your community, and consider all those different areas, and do they appeal to everybody? Respect and social inclusion. Again, what opportunities are available for people of all ages and inter to interact with each other too. Civic participation and employment are opportunities. So what volunteer options are available in your community that allows for inter intergenerational work involvement, working together, and is it encouraged? Um, what employment opportunities are available for s citizens in your community and for some that's maybe easier than others. Communication and information. So how can governments, businesses, organizations within there communicate with their citizens? And is that information uh, accessible, readable, understandable? Sometimes we just have to re jig things. Um, I should have mentioned in, when they had the transportation went up, in the communities where we went for um, our regional gatherings, transportation came up all the time. It's an issue everywhere of, of getting people around into places. Um, you know, just geographically Saskatchewan is spread out. <clears throat> Community sport and health services. So are there affordable services to help seniors and persons with varying abilities, such as snow removal, lawn, you know, put, pulling weeds, whatever? Um, do you have local health care service, services to meet the needs of your citizens or in close proximity? So what can local ur urban governments and communities do? So I'm going to... Uh, trade off here with Linda and uh, we're going to just do a little bit of group work here and it's going to focus around those eight domains. Yep. Brought them back. Okay, so this comes the time when uh, we're going to invite you folks to do some thinking about the realities of your communities, your villages, towns, cities, wherever you came from. And just as the recruiter from Cat River had to think about what the heck is it that we're offering, in this case, new people, we're asking you to think, because you now know that these are some of the different aspects of living in a community that are important. And as Rosemary said, we look maybe through the lens of people as they age and you suddenly discover as Robert and I said to one another today, you get in the little car and it's amazing that you think that it's hard to get in the car and get the darn seat belt fastened. And you can't really, when you were young, you thought it just seemed sort of silly to think about. But as you age, you begin to see things that happen. So that's why we use the lens. But it doesn't mean that a community wants to only focus on what uh, that the, the only benefit might be from people who are growing older because everybody in the community, whether they're two years old or 20 or 52 or 82, are all aging. And if they can age actively and healthily. So the question for you, and you might think about it for a few minutes yourself or you might talk to somebody near you, is to think about what do you see in your own community, places where there might be 
that you could do improvements in any one of these areas. You maybe aren't going to get to think about all of them, but think about what might apply to your community from having seen the video, from having the information about the uh, different focuses. What might there be that our community could be looking at? And then uh, give you about 10 minutes to do that. And then there will be time for uh, questions. You might give us some information about what you thought about, what you talked about. And uh, we'll have a chance to do that as a whole group. So is that clear? You're thinking about the realities of your community, where you might see some places where it can improve. And if you can talk to somebody else, doesn't matter if you're from the same community because you might discover there's commonalities there too. So 10 minutes to do with as you will.
It's good to hear all of that conversation going on. And you might be able to just continue on, but uh, given our time here, if you can gradually turn your focus back to the whole group. So you've talked to one another in small groups, and you may have questions that have come out, or you may have comments that things that you found out or things that you recognized out of your, congr congr or, uh, your towns, your communities, that you would like to say something about to the whole group. Um, this is that time. Questions, feedback, comments. I might, no, I'm going to wait for an extrovert to get up to the mic. There we go. There's always an extrovert. I'm an Thank extrovert. Thank Sorry, what heavens. kind of pervert did, what, what did you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm from uh, St. George Prudette from St. Wahlberg, and uh, met these gentlemen here from uh, Denaire Beach. Oh, yeah. And uh, they brought up a really interesting problem that is kind of uh, I interesting because it's associated with St. Wahlberg. Their people in their community have to drive a long ways to the hospitals. As you get older, you need medical, more medical attention. It's important that, that you not kill yourself by driving all the time on the roads. So in St. Wahlberg, I'm finding that the older people move closer to Saskatoon or closer to Lloyd Minster, so you don't, it's a drain on the community. And that's really unfortunate. Yeah. So I think that's a big issue. And specifically, it's a big issue in uh, Donaire Beach. It's more. Uh, I think you see it more there because uh, their Flin Flon is only 16 kilometers away. Of course, that's Manitoba, isn't it? But they can't go to Manitoba. They have to drive four hours to go to. Uh, So you can get local doctor, but specialist. So access to medical yeah. facilities, to right. sum it up, is what we, uh, we were right. discussing. Right. So when, uh, by the way, the, the gatherings, I'm not sure if you're totally clear. When we've come out, we've come out to communities where there are people who come from towns who want to learn the details of how they might become age-friendly. They can see that it could benefit, so we really get into that. And as Rosemary said, transportation is one of the issues. And when we've worked with them, we've given them an opportunity to work on transportation. And I'm thinking about the last one that we had in Moose Jaw when transportation was such a big discussion. Uh, there was a couple of things. They got looking at much more organization of how the community could help one another. So. It might not be, and they were talking about, oh, if you get a van and if you're driving people and they're paying, then you have to look at insurance problems. How would you do this if you were a little group and you were an age-friendly group? How would you address that? Would it be that it had to be for pay? Or maybe it is that uh, there could be volunteers or the town owns a van in some way or there's something a vehicle that could then be shared and people could be driven and and the key would be that there was a central organization point and I'm not trying to solve your problem I'm just saying this is the kind of thing they talked about was the organization and the sharing of the responsibility to get people now you can take one of the other aspects of that and say then look at the advocacy and justice issue and say why is it that you have to go and drive four hours to see a specialist? That's yet another topic. So out of one thing might come different areas to work on. And our job here is not to give you the answers to all of those because, well, of course, if I was ruler of the world, maybe I could give you an answer for all of that, but I don't think it would really apply anyway. So it's how you sort and solve those kinds of questions. And that's the essence of working with age-friendly. Others? I'm going to answer a non-question from this group, but it's a question that was asked from our last group, so we'll assume it's the same thing. 
how would my town know if it was going to be going, how would it, how would it get to be age, age friendly? Like actually, what does it have to do? That was the question that was asked. So is it okay if I answer it? Okay. Number one, uh, it would be the, the organization that is doing most of the groundwork and the preparing and the uh, moving that is the Saskatchewan Seniors Mechanism and our age-friendly uh, committee and resource team. So if you were interested, you would get in touch with the program person, Rosemary, and it might be that you would start <clears throat> by having a gathering in your town where resource people from Age Friendly, uh, the SSM group would come out and we would go in detail. But the essence of what happens is um, you have to begin by working with your local government, whatever it is, to get agreement that going towards having an age-friendly committee and to go towards being an age-friendly community is something that your council wants to do, whatever your local government is, so that you then work together. You need to define your base. And Rosemary talked about doing the survey in Regina Beach and Buena Vista. Uh, that for us was our first designing of a survey that would try and fit those two communities who were different already. And out of the survey, we examined uh, what people said they had in these different areas, how satisfied they were with different aspects of their community. Then they had, we facilitated a large meeting to look at those findings, and in that case, one of the real huge ones for them was communication. That there may have been things happening, but the communication was kind of hit and miss and all over again. So that was one of the key ones that they wanted to work on most quickly. So then they've been forming, they formed an age-friendly committee. And the age-friendly committee, we have tools that we supply on planning and how it is that you go through so you could take a project and you could start working on it. So you could start, you would be considered to be age friendly if you've got a resolution that shows that your, your village, town, city, uh, government is on board, that you have a survey that gives you a starting place, that you have an age friendly committee at least the beginnings of one. It might not be the same, even the same group of people that might go forever, but you've got that going. And then that you're starting to plan and you've got action that you're starting to take. That's what will get you started and being seen to be age friendly. And because it all results in some sort of action, once action starts happening in your community, people can see the benefits of it. So that's sort of the bare bones of age friendly. Have I missed anything, Rosemary well, and Robert? The only thing I would say is uh, just because sometimes people wonder, well, who are we going to call on? Who, who are we going to ask? And Those every community pretty well has some organization, be it the Lions Club, be it uh, whoever. Uh, so those are good people to tap into because, of course, they're all about community. They're all about enhancing their community. So sometimes if you're wondering, uh, who do we look to? Well, those service groups, they are always looking for some projects and they're always willing to help out. So there's a good place to start. And two, I mentioned, you know, the Manitoba video. I mean, that says it all of what they did. They brought in, you know, the school somebody you know from those other housing whatever you draw from from all those areas in your community to try and get them together and, and talk about it because like they say even if you develop a committee that doesn't mean the committee has to do everything you you get other people out there that can help you uh, the committee is just kind of the starting point and bringing things together and finding out what you want to work on so 
And the survey is what will often give you the impetus to know what it is the community wants to improve and to work on. So it's right. important that you don't think you just dream it up yourself. But yeah. the community, through the survey, says, here's where we see gaps between what is now and what we would like to be. Good afternoon. Andy Siona from the town of Blaine Lake. Uh, I guess I'm a senior citizen, judging by the white beard. And uh, my Santa Claus suit does not even need any packing or padding inside it. Anyway, we do have a very active senior citizens club in Blaine Lake. Have they been notified about the procedures that you are doing to get them involved in this? And the reason I'm saying that is that our senior citizens club has come to the council uh, in the last two months or so, and they want to set up a walking trail. And I love the idea of the walking trail from the Manitoba thing with the exercise stations in it. That's fantastic. But in a small town, you've got your one dozen people who are on every committee and every organization and they do all the work. And if the seniors organization of Saskatchewan is pushing for this mechanism, I think they have organizations throughout the province and I would virtually say that every town that has 100 people in it has a seniors club. And if you're representing 100,000, then I think that the communication between your umbrella organization and the local organizations, uh, maybe just a letter drafted to them and get them to say this is the opportunity that is before you and we are now going to be an umbrella for the whole province and take the onus off of the six people sitting on council and the mayor because they can't do what they're supposed to do as present time. I'm on four committees. I'm the mayor, I'm the fire chief, I'm the AMO coordinator and I'm on everything else, and I just can't do it. And we as councillors can't go to all these functions and perform. And to hire these coordinators and put it into our budgeting, our tax base is going to have to go up 15, 20 percent. And you don't want to put that onus on your seniors who are now your majority of your ratepayers. And they are the ones footing the bill for these things. So if they were pushing it, the town be very generously, cooperate with them, and give them all the assistance that they can. You see the dilemma that it puts us in as administrators in the top six or seven people in the community. Is there any way that your organization can take and be more? I didn't even know it existed until today. But I don't go to that club yet because I'd rather stay at home and drink my wine in my living room and play crib with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. And you've, you've described what is the age-old and getting worse problem in communities. So part of the reason that we're here is because SUMA, representing the government structures, is partnering with us on various initiatives that the SSM works on, which is everything from age-friendly to housing to uh, uh, seniors' response line, uh, all kinds of things that we're working on. You've also just described how hard it is to make sure that communication gets to where it needs to go. So, for example, we publish a newsletter magazine called Gray Matters that goes out all over the place and that we've been talking about age-friendly forever in. And so that's, that's one of the ways. I think, we're, I think we, all you can do is keep using... Idea, but you don't take, you, you got to get the people to realize that it's there. Exactly. And, and so, which is why we are hoping that when we go into a community and do a gathering, we don't want to see only the seniors club. We want to see if there's possible people that represent the schools, people that represent. So it's, it's really not a senior's activity to do it for the community. It's for the community to say, does this make sense for us as we plan? We want to be a living community. Do we use our people from our service clubs or people who are already working? And it's a refinement in the way that we plan and the way we try to organize the work. So we both aren't duplicating efforts, 
nor are we relying, again, on the same people. The smaller the community, the more accurate your description of being everybody. One of the guys at Regina Beach, Ron Monk, who's on the uh, age-friendly committee, heading up the age-friendly committee, works on our age-friendly committee, just turned 80. And Ron is many, many things in the community because that's the kind of person he's been. So when they had the big explosion in Regina Beach, there was Ron in his emergency measures place at the top of the hill getting people from, we know what it's like and, and it's, that's probably one of the biggest problems that you have to cope with and it's can we help in this way, can this kind of an organizational uh, way of being and planning be helpful. But yeah, we'll keep communicating if you keep communicating for us. <laughs> And, and also we want to note that it's not, age friendly isn't just aimed at the city councils or the town councils or whatever. That's not what it's meant to be. It is meant as whether there's another committee within your community that could take this on or one that starts, but it's not to put pressure on the council. The only thing the council is to support that to support that we want to do this type of stuff and, but there is also the and, that the city councils and the town councils do the planning. And when you're in that planning stage, can you think of some of these things and maybe put them into effect, you know, as much as you can. I mean, you know, we can't solve everything, but to do that, that's what it's about, yeah. Somebody wants to come to the mic. Well, I might be off base here, but I don't know. But anyways, what I've found, uh, uh, Doug Wilson from town of Delmony. Right there. You can see it, did you see? Oh, okay, it doesn't matter. Anyhow, what I, I've been involved in community service for many, many years. And what I'm finding is that we are coming from a us society to a me society. And it is so difficult to get people to come forward to take up these spaces that are moving on. Yeah. And that's, uh, our seniors group in Delmony is a very good group, but we got five or six people doing everything. We have probably uh, anywhere from 80 to 100 come out for our suppers, monthly suppers. But there's five or six people that are doing the work. Of course, they're all 105 years old, too. But, <laughs> but uh, anyhow, um, the uh, thing that I wanted to ask you, I says, uh, c c c could I move to Cat City? <laughs> Because I've walked away from a couple seniors uh, or adult complexes in Saskatoon because I can't bring my cat. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know if there's anything that this organization can do with that. But, but so many seniors, especially if they're by themselves, yep. have a cat or a little lap dog, yep. that that's their family. That's their comfort. And so many uh, f residential facilities for these people won't allow them to bring that. Yep. Yep. And I think that is terrible. I think it is too. But I don't know whether you people can lobby for something like Because it is diff it's a private facility, you know, like they got their condo boards and stuff. But when you all did that Cat City thing, I figured, my God, maybe that's a place. Where, where is Cat City? <laughs> you know, I never heard of it before. <laughs> we thought we should try for a name that nobody could, <laughs> nobody could get angry if we said bad things about it. <laughs> that was so darn cute, people. That was really cute. And I'm with you on the cats thing. Of course, because we all have cats, and so we just have great <laughs> pleasure, and uh, we all like we, we like animals. And you're quite right, and I think it is a justice thing, and I think it is a health thing, and I think that 
you can see in uh, some of the homes where uh, people are if you can bring animals in that are able to go and be with people. It's like blood pressure goes down, people are re respond to those little creatures. Yeah. One of the care facilities that I know of, uh, they actually have a dog that's part of their community. Uh, they only have one, they won't allow everybody to bring their own because that would be chaos. But it really uh, has changed the whole atmosphere. And he is the most loved little dog you could ever want to see because almost every senior loves him. There are a few that kind of shine. See, my wife's cousin, she lives in a place in, uh, in Penticton. And they leave their apartment doors open and the cats and they just, you know, like it's, yep. it's, it's great. Yep. Anyways, thanks all. Okay. One, one little other little story from uh, a gathering that we did in Yorkton. And there were folks from Ituna there. And they were talking about projects or where they might want to go with age friendly. And where the, we have to find out how they made out with it. But what, one of their key things was to change the name of their senior center to be community center and to change their way of being not to isolate themselves as senior center, but to be able to have some activities where uh, the younger people came in and they were planning a, uh, some ways to do that, whether it was uh, a cards night, a whist night, where they taught young people could learn how to play whist or whatever. But that turned out to be their project as one way to try and start connecting intergenerationally. So there's all kinds of things. Yeah, that's good. You mentioned that. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> yeah, we're on the same thing, and we're we're running we're, down. I'm thinking yep. in our so, time uh, factor. Yep. So anyway, age friendly Saskatchewan, and there's our website, and it's on our uh, folders that if you picked up at the back is on there. And there's some other websites too that you can look up and and find out more about it, promote it. Um, this is uh, where you can email the resource team if you want to get a hold of us to come out. Or there's our phone numbers, or again, our phone numbers are in, in the folder here. We've got our cards in there. Um, so to become age-friendly, it takes time, cooperation, persistence, and patience. And it's a, a journey. It's a long-term, ongoing commitment. And like Eileen Clark said, it wasn't about the buildings, the sidewalks. It's how you made the people feel and that's what you want to think about how are you making the people feel in your community you know inclusive uh, involved how can we do that better and so I'm going to end with giving you all a prescription today of going out and creating age-friendly communities so they become safer you get them you get your people involved and engaged um, and they do become safer, they become more vibrant, sustainable. So that's your prescription. Do you want to fill it? <laughs>